Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. A few of you asked what kind of mouse I'm using and if I could give an advice which one you should buy. And to be honest, the one that I used until now was not really good. I knew for a while now that I just had to get a better one. So I did some research and ended up getting the Logitech G502 Protheus Core. I bought the mouse with my own money, it was not sponsored or sent to me by anyone for a review. Which my wife would have surely preferred. So what I'm going to say here about this mouse is my personal opinion. No one paid me to say what I am about to say. So during the last few years Logitech was criticized to not spend a lot of efforts on their new gaming mice. But with the G502 and the smaller G402, they clearly show that they can build great products for gamers. So first of all, let's have a look at the specifications. Logitech claims that the G502 features the most accurate sensor that is available on the market. The DPI range goes from 200 up to 12,000. It also features a DPI shift button, which I will talk about later in detail. I love that button. In total, the mouse features 11 programmable buttons. And to store all your customization for these buttons, you can choose to either use the three profiles that are stored in the memory of the mouse, or you use the Logitech gaming software to create your own application and game-specific profiles. On the left side, it has three LEDs that indicate the active DPI value. On the body, Logitech used rubber grips, which make it feel very good in your hand. And the primary buttons should be good for up to 20 million clicks, at least according to Logitech. Also included are five 3.6 gram weights, which you can use to customize the balance of the mouse. You just need to open this plastic plate on the bottom, which is held in place by a magnet. And here you can then insert the weights. Where you place them and how many, that is entirely up to you. Before we now head over to the software, let's have a look at that black box that I have sitting here. Since the 502 has a cable and my old mouse did not, there's something about the difference that needs to be considered. And that is the drag on the cable, as well as the possibility that the cable gets stuck on or behind my table. This is bad while playing. So what I bought is the Razer Armadillo 2, which Razer calls Gaming Mouse Cord Controller. So how does it work and how does it help? When I press on the top, then on the left side a gap opens. Inside that gap I place the mouse cable. And once I release the top of the Armadillo 2, it will secure the mouse cable in this position. So there's little to no drag on it. There are cheaper cable holders than this one, but I just like the design of it. Before we move over to my desk, there's something about the packaging that I want to show you. Maybe you have noticed before that on the right side there is this round metal, which looks like it could be a battery. Don't get confused by it, it is only a magnet used to keep the box closed. Now let's move over to my desk. I placed the armadillo next to my keypad and made sure that the cable is long enough so that I can reach every corner. You should not place the cable holder directly next to the mouse pad or you might collide with it. And now it's time to have a look at the Logitech gaming software. When we start it, then we see the G502 where all its buttons are highlighted. In the top right you see an option that lets you choose if you want to use the three inbuilt profiles or use the profiles in the gaming software. I have set it to use the software profiles and the profile section then looks like this. Here you can see the games that the software found on my PC and for them it downloaded a few profiles. If you want to assign a specific action to any of the buttons of the mouse, then you only need to locate this action in the commands menu on the left and then drag and drop it on the button. But this will only work if you use the default key mapping in the game. If you change the key for an action in the game, then this will not work as the Logitech gaming software only knows the default mapping of the game and assign the keys then. In that case, you need to open the command editor and set the specific keystroke. You can also set up a bit more complex commands using the multi-key macro option. So let's say that when I press the G4 button on my mouse, then I want to go directly to the gunner seat of a vehicle when I enter it. To do that, I press the start recording button and then press the E and after that the F2 key on my keyboard. 
This means that when I now press the G4 button on my mouse, then the software will first send a E keystroke and after that the F2 keystroke. Which means that I get much easier to the gunner seat. If you also play the battlefield for a CTE, then you need to add the CTE client to the profile. Otherwise it will not be activated when you are playing on a CTE server. So as you have seen here, it is very easy to customize the buttons of the mouse. You have really a lot of options here to choose from. It is also very easy to create additional profiles for specific applications and you can also import and export profiles. In the next section we can define up to 5 DPI values. We can also set which one of these is the default and which one is used for the DPI shift button. Per default, the DPI values that you define here are used for all applications. But if you want, then you can also set that these should be stored in a profile, so you can choose a different setting for different profiles. In the next section we can change the lighting effects of the mouse. Here we have an option to change the brightness of the logo and we could also enable a breathing effect. This is nice for a showroom, but on my desk I really don't like that, so I will keep this off. You can also select if you want the DPI indicators to light up all the time or not. And you have a sleep timer for the light. What you cannot change is the color, like you can for the G19 keyboard. And lastly we have an option to tell the software what kind of surface we use the mouse on. There are three options predefined, but I can also add a new one and then run the calibration which should optimize the performance for that surface. Let's have a look at the profiles that get saved into the memory of the mouse. To enable these we just have to switch this option. Now you can change between the profiles 1, 2 and 3 by using the G9 button on the mouse. We can alter the functions for each of the buttons just like we can in the software mode. So even though I have similar options for the profiles that are stored in the memory of the mouse, I still prefer the software mode because there I can create more profiles which will be activated automatically when I start the application or the game. Now let's go back to my desk. With the buttons G7 and G8 I can switch between the DPI values that we set before in the software. And you see that the DPI indicator LEDs show me that I am changing the value. And when I press and hold the DPI shift button then the mouse will use the DPI setting that we assigned for that action. And when I let go of the button, then it goes back to the previous DPI value. A nice touch is that when you use a Logitech gaming keyboard that has a display like the G19, then you see the DPI value displayed there on the screen. This happens automatically. You do not have to install any additional software or plugin because both are using the Logitech gaming software. I have used the G502 for about 10 hours now. As with every new input device, it requires some time to get used to it and find the right values. What I really love is the DPI shift button. Let me show you why. I am aiming down my sight and moving the mouse over my Q-pad. When I press and hold the DPI shift button, then the active DPI changes to 1200 and I move a lot slower. But why do I like this? I have set the sensitivity in the game to a level that I like for close to mid-range. But when I'm using a 4x magnification sight and want to shoot a player who is far away, then with this ADS sensitivity it is not easy to make the required small adjustments to stay on target. Or even get on target. But when you press and hold the DPI shift button and lower your DPI value that way, then you can get your crosshair exactly where you want it to be. This also requires some time to get used to, but once you do, you just don't want to miss that anymore. I think it's now finally time for my conclusion. At a price of 70 euros or about 80 US dollars as I've seen on Amazon.com, the Logitech G502 Prometheus Core is not what you call cheap. But if you buy one, you will not regret it. It looks amazing, it feels extremely good in your hand, it is very precise and the software allows you to fully customize it to fit your needs. It really is a very high quality product. So if you are looking for a gaming mouse, then this is it. The only thing that I could nitpick on is that I cannot change the color of the light for the logo. 
like I can change the color on the G19. But this is really nitpicking. The G502 is a very good gaming mouse. If you buy one, then you should also consider to buy a cable holder, if you don't have one already. Some of them are really cheap, or you could even build one yourself. I hope that you enjoyed my very first hardware review video. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more like this in the future. If you like my content, then please consider to hit the subscribe button and I might see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.